Hey guys, this is David Wells doing a React and Node tutorial. Basically running through what isomorphic JavaScript really means. Isomorphic JavaScript basically means that you uh, have one code base that's running on both the client and the server. Now why would you want to do this? Well, um, with other front end frameworks out there like Angular, Ember, Backbone, etc. Even with React, if you're not loading on the server side, there is kind of that flash of unstyled content as the JavaScript's being piped to the user's browser. Um, when they're going to that page initially, the app is loading up. Uh, if you render on the server side, your DOM nodes and everything are there. And once the JavaScript is piped down to the user, um, the app will work as it should. So it's getting rid of that uh, bad user experience so one of the benefits there would be a better user uh, experience for everyone coming to the site, a uh, better perceived user experience, uh, if I want to clarify that. The other thing, is, and this is really the main point uh, for me and why I got interested in this stuff, was the search indexability of uh, when you render the, your uh, React.js uh, components on the server. So when a visitor comes to your site and everything is running through Angular or React or whatever and you're not rendering on the server side, um, that search engine has no idea what your page is about. There are third-party services you can pay money for to do that. Uh, one of them is mentioned in the article here, prerender.io. React actually comes with this baked into the library. So they thought about server-side rendering as they're building out the library so you can actually compose those uh, DOM nodes on the server side. Um, there's a number of different libraries out there, uh, like for Rails or PHP, if you're trying to do server side rendering with React. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm gonna be covering Node.js. Um, another kind of benefit of isomorphic JavaScript is one, your code is like in one place, so it's easier for code maintenance. And then there's also um, the concept of basically progressive enhancements. And that means if for whatever reason your user has JavaScript turned off in their browser, um, forms can still process if you have those fallback mechanisms uh, when you're loading the, you're, you're still loading those DOM nodes and what have you. So if you have a form that's posting somewhere, uh, it can still do so as long as it doesn't rely on JavaScript to do so. So that's another kind of added benefit to isomorphic JavaScript. Cool, so enough about what it is. Um, the demo here today is going to be using a React component library called Griddle. Uh, as you can see here, basically it outputs um, different grids that you can filter through and do whatever. Um, but let's say like you're, you're running an app and you want this content, uh, content to be indexed by search engines. Uh, you know, and this is served from like a JSON object somewhere. So search engine isn't really gonna uh, index that and, and serve this up the way that you want. Uh, and a good example of that uh, would be like nomadlist.io. Uh, I have no idea what the back end of this is, but this is like if I was building this in Node and Express uh, and the front end was React, I would absolutely want all this stuff to be indexed. So when people are searching for different areas and what have you, that this could actually be served up in Google. Uh, so I'm not, uh, Google just doesn't see a blank page here, for example. So um, there is a library here. Um, you can find it at the link uh, right here. And basically uh, all you gotta do is clone it down, do an NPM install, and then launch the node server. And I'm gonna run through the code right now. So first things first, if we jump into our package.json file, uh, the dev dependencies, basically everything is being packaged up with Browserify. I'm using Gulp for this, I'm uh, not a huge fan of Grunt. Um, and Node.jsx, that is what actually does the transpiling of your JSX on uh, the server side. So that's a, a definitely a component that you'll need. Um, React, React Tools, and Reactify. Um, and we're using EJS as the templating language uh, example here. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I'll show you guys the templating, how that works in a second here. And of course, Express, uh, the Griddle React um, library component. 
and this could be done with any React component. So you could choose whatever you want. Um, the exact same methodologies will apply to your project. Next thing to look at is the gulp file. And this is what is running the packaging of the actual app scripts. But basically it just runs through, grabs the main um, JS here and packages that down via Browserify and then puts that into the public folder with all the different dependencies and what have you. Um, again, you can use Grunt um, and there's many different ways to build a React, um, have a build system set up. This is just for this demo. So looking at the full project, uh, the main entry point is server.js um, where basically we are requiring Express um, defining that and then this is where the node JSX transpiler comes into play so you just require that and install it and that will then allow you to do the node JSX transpiling on the server side and if we actually go and look at the components um, this is pretty typical uh, of how you would see a component set up um, where you know here's you have your react create class method the only difference here is um, when you're trying to render something server-side you want to react.create factory and then require that library um, this is an example of a component that I defined myself and the other difference here would be instead of just like having this the way it is and inserting it into the dom right here you module.exports that so it can be used elsewhere and uh, if we look in the main one here uh, here we're doing the same exact thing so uh, and again this is the main.js is what gets packaged down and sent to the browser but the react app right here so we're module.exporting it and then in the main.js here we're saying okay uh, require my main module here that is the export create a factory out of it um, the mount node is uh, specified here as well and if you want to look at the view so if you go to the views under views and index.ejs again this is in ejs this could be jade or whatever templating language handlebars etc that you want to use um, but here we have our main uh, mount point so going back in here, uh, what we do is uh, instantiate the class here and then mount the node. And this is what gets sent down um, to the um, actual build file, so the JavaScript. So this isn't the server-side rendering component. The server-side rendering actually happens in the routes. So if we go into routes and core routes, what we have here is again the exact same thing so we are saying okay first of all we need react so require react uh, with add-ons then specify the react app cool so we got that again this is from the module that exports in react uh, app.js and then this is just the express um, route declaration so on the home page go ahead and create React HTML on the website. So React has a super handy method called render to string. So basically we're instantiating um, that React app as well. Here, not passing, you can pass in options here as well. Option one, two, three, whatever your component actually takes. Um, but we're just rendering the base app here and then passing that into our template and there's the react output and it's passing in that react html so if we go back into the view that's being rendered server side we can see that variable is being passed in here so the react output is being passed in from the core route here so here is where basically it's transpiling um, that react into the dom nodes and outputting it Cool, so that is um, it in a nutshell. Um, again, the main.js, this is the client side stuff. So that gets bundled down and put into the main.js. So this is gonna be a rather large file to open because it has the entire React library and all of its dependencies. 
Um, but we'll take a look at that in a second. And just to show you that this is working, let me go ahead and close this. We'll go ahead and go to the folder. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server. So to get it, um, the demo running, just type in node server.js and it will run the server at port 444. So if I go in here, here's the example. So if I refresh the page, here is the React rendering. And if we wanna look at the Griddle component real quick, so in the React app, this is the, again, we're loading that griddle component and we're creating the factory here. So the server knows how to render that server side. And then we're just using that component. Um, and I'm just using some fake JSON data from the actual demo site. So it's saying like, okay, feed in those, that data, feed in this column data and the result per page, I just set to hundred for this demo. Um, because this is again, being indexed by search engines um, cool. So, and you can see the fake data in the data folder. Um, but if we go into the EJS, what you can see, and if we go and inspect this stuff, basically you can see that it has all, all the, you know, data react ID stuff in there. If we actually go in and so this is our main script. So even if this was, if I commented this out, the app would still work. It just wouldn't be rendering server side. Um, but if I actually comment out the library itself, so now that's commented out main.js. Um, and that's what actually drives the app. So I like sorting and what have you, as we can see there. So if I refresh this page, none of that stuff works. Um, and that's because if we look at the source, the um, actual React code is not loading. So if I view the page source, uh, you can see, but all the data is there and uh, available to be indexed by search engines. Here is our um, script commented out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uncomment that out and we'll go look at the demo again. And you can see here that now it's back and the uh, React component is mounting all the way. So the sortability and filterability, et cetera, from that Griddle React component is working. Um, and just as a final example, we'll go ahead and get rid of the actual variable here. So um, I'll just get rid of this guy, save this again. And if I go ahead and refresh this page, you can see everything still loads. I'm running on a local host, which is pretty fast. So, and the data is local, so I'm not piping anything down, but you can imagine with a larger data set, um, this could present itself as a problem. Um, and if we look here, you can see that, um, let's take a look at the actual source of the page view page source. You can see that there is no content to be indexed by Google. And that is because we're no longer uh, injecting that rendered um, HTML. Uh, again, remember in the routes file where we say, okay, grab my component and when a certain route is hit, go ahead and render that to a string and output that for me. So that's basically isomorphic JavaScript in a nutshell. Um, you can see why you know this would be bad for search indexability. So we'll go ahead and add that back in. And then if I go ahead and refresh that source, boom, there it is. Everything for Google to ingest and give us more search traffic. And that is isomorphic JavaScript in a nutshell. Sorry for the slightly longer video. So now there's really no reason for you not to be rendering your React component server side. Again, you can do this in PHP or Rails or whatever language you're using. Um, it's super easy to do in Node as I've shown here and in that demo repo. Um, for additional um, isomorphic resources, check out the bottom of the post. This will be on React News, which is an awesome resource. I definitely recommend uh, subscribing to them if you are interested in keeping up with the latest and greatest in the React JS community. Um, but again, uh, at the bottom of the post, there's a ton of different um, server-side React stuff.
for you to check out, including some PHP stuff, Rails stuff, etc. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, tweet me at David Wells if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can see the power of rendering this stuff server side. Um, if not for the better overall user experience or perceived better user experience, but for the um, search indexability of your app. Um, if everything's behind the logged in URL or authentication, uh, this might not make as much sense. But if you do have front end stuff that you need to be uh, indexed, definitely, definitely, definitely do this. Cool.